What's going on, Internet? Today we're going to talk to you about <coughs> geostrategic research and neothermal development laboratory. Grindle. Well, Walk us through. Well, <laughs> thousand, you don't want to keep that was a mouth stammering. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a 45 uh, 10 card limit, um, uh, and you start the game with 10 credits and one bad publicity. So, first off, we're going to talk to you about the card pool for this identity. Do you feel that the card pool is is there for it? And what we mean by that is. When the professor came out, everyone said, wow, this identity is really phenomenal, but it just doesn't have the, the cards available to build a deck around. So Grindle is coming in the, the next pack, so we are close. Is the card pool there for this? I think the card pool's here because, I mean, we've, we're already seeing very competitive decks for Whalen. I mean, I think, uh, it might just be me personally, but I think the Whalen um, kind of... Um, quick quick advancing I don't, I don't want to say fast advance i don't know if there's a term for it but just starting to advance really fast um is probably the most powerful way to play in my opinion and then they just have that very good fallback of being able to scorched earth and and um you know it just they could fall back on a kill style so easy and all the cards are already in faction i just think like they can come out so fast, and then once they lose steam, they can kind of shift gears and become like a fearsome threat. What's uh, your two cents on that card pool? Card pool, I think it's there. This uh, this ability that comes with this card is is going to be useful, kind of no matter what your what deck you're putting it into. I mean, everybody could use extra credits. Um, we'll get into some more details about that later, but I, card pool wise, I think it's there. I think it'll be ready to use right out of the box. Uh, for card pool, on my opinions here, I feel you're not going to have a full issue. Wayland has a wonderful suite of cards to pick from. With it being uh, low influence, you know, you're not really going to have to worry about what you're going to stack in there. Um, the cards are available to you. If you're running a, a Wayland deck right now, you could almost just switch in uh, Grindle and you're not going to see that much of a speed bump. Obviously, you're going to want to tweak it a little, but you might be able to bring your low low ice or your your cheap ice probably up a couple credits and definitely then, and then use use and, and yeah and that's, and that's that what way. i mean by tweaking because you're going to want to build to the power but you're not going to have a problem with the cards that are available to do this right now um so you're looking at this power so you start the game with 10 credits so that's a five extra bonus one bad publicity Starting on this side here, what do you think the counters are going to be okay. to this? Uh, you know, um, we might see this in a couple store championships. Should people be worried and what? how should they play against? Okay. Um, there, there are obviously a couple of hard counters to this. Uh, Count Siphon, Vamp, anything that's going to get rid of the, the Grendel's bonus and still leave them with that bad publicity, I mean, is going to just be gold for the runner. So there's that. Um, the, the fact that the bad pub comes with it is kind of counterintuitive itself also depending on what your opening hand draw looks like um, whether you mulligan or not you know you, you know you're gonna come up with those hands where the, the 10 credits is gonna be almost entirely used on resing a couple of ice and you're not gonna be really any any further ahead of the game than you would have been using any other uh, uh, identity and just taking lower cost ice but again that's that's all in the details so how are you countering Grindle? I mean I'm looking forward uh... And, and, and checking out cards that are also coming in the pack that have been spoiled. And I mean, Blackmail is is a, is a single credit cost uh, event. It, it lets you make a run if the, the Corp has a bad publicity, and it lets you make a run and they can't res ice. So that, that strong strategy that I would consider Grendel to want to use is to put a good and the run ice out very early and try to start advancing behind it. You know, like to have that Chimera, being able to res that several times and score... Uh, you know, like a five-point um, Project Atlas, well, an overscored, you know, two-token mm -hmm. pro Project Atlas, I think is the is the, the the best way to start this game off. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that has to go into that hand, but but I think that a hard counter would be Blackmail. Um, we haven't really brought up, um, um, like, kind of a play style as the runner, and that's just trying to... This is doing what Andy does great, which is just coming out of the gate, huge aggression, and they're and they're and they're strongest uh, at the early game. 
Uh, if so, if you can kind of wait out with cards, the course we're talking about, like account siphon and vamps, if you can wait out that first couple turns, then I mean, if you're if you're if you you as the runner are trying to go for for mid to late game runs and you're able to drag them out onto that, then I think you're going to be doing really good. I would have to say 100% agree. The the counters to this identity are going to mainly be tapping your money. If you lose your money very quickly early game first turn, there is no point in running Grindle. You have been neutralized. In the same vein though, and I and I just I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm saying like it is kind of nice to be able to survive an account siphon and, and still have five credits. Right? right. Like they still that is still an upside, right? I mean granted the whole card ability is gone, but they still have that five credits to play with. So you're looking there and and um like Squid touched upon, it's all about getting and attacking early game to force them to spend these credits in ways that they don't want to. If they're using Grindle, they probably have a plan that they're going to build up some, um, you know, you're going to move your ice to a different bracket. So you're not using those very low cost res ice. You're going to use um, maybe something in the three to four, you know, bracket because you're going to be able to pop those and still have credits to advance after. So, you know, looking at that, if, if, like I said, if you need, if you can take that money away from them, force them to spend it somewhere else, you have uh, you have nullified this ability. Um, saying that, let's look at using the powers here. Now this is where it's going to get really crazy and interesting because I believe that this is an incredible bonus. This is going to be a great identity to to use and to build around because it's going to have that speed at the start of the game to go either way. Um, Wayland has the kills and factions already been mentioned and they have really good agendas to be able to start uh, scoring uh, yeah, really early. Start, yeah. And with the, with coupled with some of the neutral ones, you're, you're on a roll here. This is a great base. It, this deck, it doesn't build itself. Like if, if I'm sounding, like that, like it's going to be easy to throw a Grindle deck together, but I mean... I don't think you're coming off like that guy at all. <laughs> so why don't we talk about some of the, the using the powers from your side. I'm going to go with, um, and, and Corpse will bring this down, I'm going to go with obviously the best play in my opinion. A lot of, a lot of it hinges on, on your opening hand, but being able to score a Project Atlas at five agenda points, having two tokens on it, first turn, or even, well not first turn, but second turn, is going to be just game changing. And I mean like, when I say that, I mean- Control the pace. You're just gonna control the pace and you're gonna make the runner go, I have to win because if I don't shut him down or I, or I let him gain a bunch of money, at any point in time, once he draws one of those three cards he needs to kill me, he's gonna search for the other two. So you're, you're putting, a ridiculous amount of pressure on and that could be the way you win you could just not even be trying to do anything else you could be trying to overscore the atlas and then just finding your your kill cards as quick as possible i mean and that is not something that whalen can't do already no. right now it's just now they're going to be able to have and and i'm going back to like chimera I think is, a, is an awesome ice to start doing this, but most people don't have enough money to res the Chimera Multiple enough times, turns yeah. to, to actually get the use out of it. But but here we go. We've got two full turns where you can where where you can res a Chimera and be advancing. Mm. Uh, another uh, great use for this power is restructure. I mean, boom, right there. It, you don't have to do anything. You automatically gain that five credits. So. There's a lot of like fallback plans in my opinion. I think that I think that the economy is going to be really good, um, and this kind of opens up a new avenue. It's maybe it's not a, a use for the power, but it opens up a new avenue of maybe not using transaction operations. You know, maybe maybe Whalen plays better with assets, mm -hmm. right? Um, we don't know. Uh, well, again, they are getting that uh, the refinery to complement this, but I don't. I'm not. I think that's. I think that's uh, just named. I don't think it really complements this. No, much. I mean like as another like asset to complement this is you're what right. you're talking about. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, Grendel Refinery, um, 
can be advanced and for every advancement token on it, you can pay a click, trash it, and for every advancement token you gain $4, so. So, on the swing side of things, the money's good, and we're using it effectively. Why don't you talk about how, what we're gonna do and use this power with the bad publicity. Are you gonna... Yeah. So against this power. So, yeah, so the, the speed bumps, the hurdles that you're gonna have to get over is, the first one is that your opening hand, which you usually can't control. Um, we've all had the bad ones and in this situation with a lot of stuff that Sly's talking about, if you kind of don't have like a really good opening hand, you're going to, you're going to be behind the eight ball to start off anyway. So that it kind of nullifies the benefit. So why don't we, um, why don't you add in there, what is a good opening hand? So what are you, what are you looking for? Like define good opening hand okay. in that situation. Uh, the way that my brain goes with this kind of stuff, I, I'd like to see a Project Atlas in hand. It'd be nice if it was the only agenda in the hand. Yeah, that would be um, <laughs> ideal. Then I would like to see uh, one really cheap, uh, at least one really cheap end run, um, because just because the the. Okay, how am I going to say this? If you're playing against somebody who's blue, you're going to need to worry about them just hopping your ice. So you're going to need to have at least two ice in your hand anyway to, to put over top of it and then do your install. If you're going to over advance a Project Atlas, that's going to require um, five, five advancements on it, right? So that means you're going to have to make sure that you have at least a little bit of money in there as well to be able to res the ice and also advance it, but the whole time your HQ and R&D is going to be open. So if you're doing it that way, that's going to kind of hurt you if they go digging into your, uh, into your uh, centrals. If you're playing against green, another huge possibility. Again, it's gonna slow you down again because you're gonna have to make sure you've got something over top R&D, something over top of HQ, maybe not, who cares, or you know what I mean, but then, and then at least one more over your remote server, maybe the Chimera that he's talking about with the projectiles behind so that you can do that. But again, if the runner's being, um, and again, that, that also relies on you having a really uh, sparse hand, so like one agenda in there, maybe two, something you can hide, you know what I mean, and, and maybe depend on the luck of luck of the draw. But it's, to now, me, it's to, too much. It's too much prerequisite. You have to have that hand in order to to really fully take advantage of those extra five credits because those five credits could just as simply come from uh, a hedge fund with the other identity. So right? that's what you're saying is that hand, that hand that you're talking about, that that ideal hand is only to make use of the extra five credits to start advancing. Yeah. Right. There is always the players who are just going to play more cautious and just go, you know, ice, ice. Yeah. Income. Yeah. And then, right. and then, but then if you're playing it like that, you're kind of giving up uh, a lot. You're giving up um, having potentially more of a bonus. We're sorry about that there. Um, you're giving up having, um, how, like how many, how many transactions over the course of the game are you going to play if you're using the other identity, right? You're at least going to play six, seven, you know what I mean? Depending on what happened. You Jackson Howard a few more and play him some more. You know Don't what I mean? Don't put transactions there. in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna gain a lot, right? So you're and talking about having the bad publicity there. Like yeah, but and they and, and and then that's without the bad publicity. Now, you, if you use Grendel, you have the bad publicity, which is potentially going to completely counteract you having those extra credits in the beginning anyway. If you are able to res up a nice chunky ice, you know whatever, and they get they just happen to pull the one that uh, is gonna break it. Now they've got a bad pub to get through it every time, and that's gonna be every run they're gonna be making that dollar back. So they could come out basically monetarily f way farther ahead of you than you ever would with the original five extra credits. Yeah. And, and anybody with um, uh, personal workshops are going to be gaining that extra dollar. I said before too, um, in, in, in other takes that we've done, um, not that we've done several. Um, <laughs> I've said before too, that you have to be able to take advantage of that bad publicity or that bad publicity, you know, or like if you're, if you're hitting a hard end run and you don't have the ice, you're not being able to take, take, that's that's so. true. So early game, if they don't have anything out, yeah, they're not going to be able to use it. But if you don't have, if you haven't put an answer in for that bad publicity, then eventually it is going yeah. to. Yeah, really but I don't think you. Wayland is is a faction that worries about bad publicity. Yeah, I, I've played against them before, and there's people that that just pile it on. And, they they pile and, and it and there's, on. And there's our, our buddy Glitch does that, and he beats me almost every time. <laughs> right. so, so props I mean, to as, you. As long as you are aware that you're starting with that bad publicity and you know maybe somewhere in your deck you have a workaround for that. I don't know if you're gonna like pop mills to, to kill it or um, if you have agendas that when scored, you, you know, you're, you're cutting your bad publicity down. Um, you know, just be aware of it. Uh, also, this is going to be a deck that you're, I strongly believe is like a banker's deck. You're really gonna have to money management this deck don't 
spend those 10 extra credits you know, resin, you know, Adrian's warm. right out yeah. of the gate. <laughs> Boom, right? <laughs> no, you you're can't get my agenda. I can't advance. Yeah. You're not getting it. Right, you're really, you're really going to have to plan it out. You want to, you want to stretch that. Unless that. it's restructure, restructure Hadrian's. <laughs> and then you'll have it. <laughs> right, so that that is true. But uh, but then again, that's, that's managing your, your economy <laughs> properly, right? Like you're going to want to more so res two pieces of medium level ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah. this, right? You're gonna want to get the most bang out of your buck, mm -hmm. and and I think being able to like pull up some like strong mid game, like even just a solid a solid two mid game ice that makes face checking so bad. You right. know what Painful, I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. like to to even if you're gonna, I mean, ten influence isn't a lot to splash, but I mean, if you can res an itchy almost like like first, yeah, like you're gonna be making them pay. Like an insane amount until they get their century breaker, and even then, like yeah. it's a lot to get yeah. through. Let's see. Oh, before we move on to from that, the uh, with the low influence, the uh, uh, you're, you're probably gonna have to splash for a code gate because Wayland just doesn't have a code gate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So either you're taking super low level colorless stuff, which is easy to break, or you have to splash for like a toll booth. So why don't you roll into that then? So, oh, oh, the influence. Yeah. So talk about influence. Um, yeah, there's an S beside that one. That's my topic. Well, he talked out of order. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Let's just segue, order? okay? Like, <laughs> people even do that in the radio. Well, you did start. You said influence first. Whatever. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to right into that. So, the 10 influence is going to hurt this uh, a lot, I think, because you're going to need to make sure you have an ice build that is perfectly tailored to do exactly what Sly was talking about with the with the fast advance. You're going to have to make sure that your res costs are kind of perfect for the for the types of hands that you're going to be drawing on on the open of the game. With only 10, that's going to severely limit your ability to do any kind of tagging. So that's going to make scorched earth kind of not so hot anymore, so you're going to be without that. And you if only that need, you only need four influence for two C source, which is kind of what they use anyway. Yep. So there goes four of the ten. You know what I mean? It's going to oh, be I agree. gone. It's in not an a instant, whole lot, right? but yeah. I mean, then you could use the other six for um, snares, right? Snares splashes for two or three. Two. I never, I never splash it. So. <laughs> so there you go. There's so, all your influence. He's always in red. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that again, the the trade off of the five credits is not worth losing the five influence and taking the bad pub. You know what I mean? It's it just doesn't balance with the with just the way the current card pool is and with the way the card pool is going to be when this identity hits the table. I don't think that it's going to be as effective as as others we're, think it's going we're to be. On, we're on influence, not how much you hate the card. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't, I don't hate keep, the card, I think it's fine. I, don't I, think just, the, I just don't think it's, it's as fine. It's not here, so it, it, you can't dump on it right now. You can't <laughs> take that dump on it, but I mean like, and it's not, because it can't, it can't defend itself, too, the way you're talking about it. No, I don't think the influence is an issue. I think there's enough going on in Wayland that you're not going to miss the, you, you know, the five dots of it. Um, there's just... You, you know, when, you, when you're building a Grindle deck, I believe you're either going to go for a kill or you're going to be going for the advance. And your influence is going to be put into those categories. Obviously, if you're going for a kill, you know, you're going to need a little bit of, of the tagging mechanisms from MBN. You know, if you're going for advance, then you're going to use that splash more on, on um, sprinkling the variety of ice throughout your deck and, you know, maybe a, a, a trap just to be on the safe side. Can't forget that Jehu might also be the one that gets cut from these decks, right? Because you're just not going to have enough. Mm. Yeah. That'll hurt. Well, again, and uh, I'm going to just kind of break down the style of deck that I would make. Um, I'm thinking that I would trade all of my high-end ice for mid-game ice. I'd keep all the low-end ice that, that, that Wayland normally plays. Um, because I think that if you end up going to late game... I wouldn't even plan to go late game. If you end up going the late game, you basically lost anyway. So put all your marbles in going early. So I'd switch all my high end ice, like the the the, the Heimdalls and and all that stuff. I'd switch it down to the to the very very strong uh, medium game ice. I'd probably be splashing for for some code gates. You're right. So toll boosts are really good at that point. But I think that I'm probably using my, my influence on two C source and three snares. It makes the it makes the R and D very very prickly. Um, and I I mean I'm going for the, the I'm going for the straight score. So I'm leaving my R and D open. And you know I'm trying to bring 
as, as much ferocity as possible. And uh, the snares are just so much bang for your buck in a, in a Wayland deck because you have to clear those tags. I play Gentechi enough to know that people can stick tags against me. Obviously, if you're playing resource heavy, I can choose, you know, they could choose to kind of keep it or not. But there's a lot of people who keep their tags against me. Uh, but Wayland, no possibility. You've lost three cards, a click, and two dollars. Basically every time you hit one of those. Um, and it forces the runner to not run on their last click, which is actually going to kind of be a benefit in this this kind of scenario. But again, I'm going early game, I'm going for aggression. Um, I completely agree with everything Corp said. There's, there's a lot of downsides to it, but I've said it a hundred times, I like risk for reward. I think if you're if you're adding that risk, and bad publicity is a huge risk, don't get me wrong, but we are. I like, you're getting me wrong, am I mispronouncing everything? No, bad, we are, bad publicity. Oh, we are. Right. Lost some I of its it. subtle humor because I had to explain it, but carry on. It was very subtle humor. It was so subtle. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think that I think that this is going to be an ID that we see, and I think it's going to be an ID that uh, wins a lot. So what about predictability? Um, you sit across the table from somebody, somebody puts this identity down. Are you going to be able to predict their deck style? I think no. I think yes. And I think he I'm, agrees I'm a with definite, me. I'm a definite yes. I mean, so they got they got extra money. <laughs> okay, that's that's cool. It's I, probably going to be to res some chunky ice, you know what I mean? I know your first play is going to be self-modifying code and then just running and seeing what the hell they play, and I'm just I'm mulliganing for a night. Yeah, yeah but I don't think I'm you just can... might dive into R&D as hard as I can, right? Yeah, you've got indexing. Yeah. I think it's going to take a couple play turns to be able to see if, if they're a kill deck or if they're a, an advanced deck. I don't, I don't think looking across that... That Grindle is the kind that you can say that is definitely an advancer's well, deck. Until I don't think like, Grindle. I don't, th I don't think I out. agree with that. I don't think it's black and white. I think that all good Wayland decks have both. I think they do both well because it's in faction. You know, it's nothing really to put scorched earth in your deck. Remember, the ten influence is going to hurt that. Deck. I remember everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, that's why I. That's why I think it's going to be either a definite kill or it's going to be a definite yeah, they're only going to be able to do one really well with 10 influence right i, I think the other prove like, them wrong i think the other stuff is going to be that like you can <laughs> you can have the kill in there just in case you're like well things aren't going as planned that's but what it, i'm saying but it's, it's not fallback but it's not going to be as strong and easy to pull off if you've just focused on i agree on it's the late game kill. win i think that once the game goes into the late game you bank and you kill if they'd already have their plascretes out because they're playing against whale and yeah. you know what I mean? There's just Who there's so many plascretes. <laughs> like everybody. <laughs> plascretes, public sympathies, all of that kind of great stuff that's that's gonna throw the wrench in the works for any whaling player. Now it's gonna hurt you even more if you can't fully exploit um tagging and bagging. Alright, run off your, your full grindle summary. Full Grindle summary, um, I think that we're going to see it. I think that it's it's usable. It's definitely usable, but it's going to be for that specific kind of player that's like him with the risk for reward and really, you know, they're either really going to win super fast or they're just, as soon as the, it hits mid-game and they're not ahead, it's, they're going to lose. They're just going to bottom right out. The thing's going to run out of steam. Take their so, pants off and run around the table. Yeah, basically. Time. So for this, for me, it's 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 not something that I would use over the original Wayland identity at all. It just, it doesn't sing to me. It doesn't, it doesn't have the stability that, um, most players who like to have that um, kind of tactician's way of, of going about things, they're not going to love it the same as uh, they do the original Whalen. Because, I mean, loading your deck up with a bunch of transactions, using some of your splash on that, gaining all that extra money is just dynamite compared to just gaining $5 and losing the influence and taking the bad pub. I think that, I don't know, I love the idea of starting the game with five extra clicks. I think that's what makes Andy so powerful. Um, I don't think the bad publicity is going to be a big enough deal if this deck plays the way I think it's going to play. I mean, I'm not a Whalen player by any means, but I do play against Whalen players, and I know I'm going to give a shout out to my buddy Glitch and my buddy Kaiwin in Toronto. Um, those guys just every time I play them, I just it's so fast, it's so brutal, it's it's what I want my Gen Techie to be, but um, I just think that I think that in their hands specifically. And people like them, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a force, man. I am I am terrified of this identity. Terrified. Uh, Grindle for me is something to fear as well. This is an amazing identity to, to you know to, to lean towards to build a deck around. And 
I believe that because it's all about, to me, I, th I think of this game as controlling board state. And if you've read some articles online, you, you, everyone is aware of the early game, mid game, and obviously late game, right? Obviously before, runner had the advantage early. And then it was kind of like, you know, the middle, it was, it was teetering. And then the corp had the advantage late game. This takes the advantage box and moves it for the corporation. It moves it up. The corporation is deadly early game. The corporation is already then set for mid game. Um, it's forcing the runner to stretch the game out on this one. And not a lot of runner decks are built for late game. Uh, we might see that change. I know in our group, we are trying to build decks that are... Uh, Sustainable ring, rigs and stuff. Right, we're, we're looking for um, building rigs, slowing the runner down. Um, we've experimented a lot with the source, so slowing the corporation down. But moving, moving the, um, like I said, that advantage box from a late game corporate advantage to an early game is is just mind blowing what this can do. This is a very powerful agenda, and, or identity. Definitely look out for it. I think that uh, too. Like we're just kind of talking about it a lot, but um, I, I'm not sure if any of us are going to play it. Really, we might mess around with it a little bit. But I want to give a shout out to our, our friends at Agenda Seven. They're they're doing this uh, this thing now where they they basically made a pack, and I think it's pretty cool that every new ID that comes out they're gonna actually make decks for and play, like all three that's of them. A, that's a pretty good idea. Um, so maybe that's something that we try out, but... Uh, I think um, we, <laughs> we usually dabble in everything that comes out, but I don't think we, we, we don't stick with things through. Everyone has their fallback. This is, but what I'm trying to say is I think that this is our, uh, this is our first impression, but I think that maybe um, after the pack comes out, like definitely go check out Agenda 7, because they're gonna be making decks yeah. and maybe they'll, be ha maybe they'll have better strategies. Um, they may find the uh, the dot deck that will hit the internet. Well, the only reason I don't lean towards Grendel is because I believe um, there is another top tier identity, and we'll we'll talk about that in another one. But I have made my choice going forward for store championships and um, for a corporation build, and that I believe is going to be the next best identity. And we've talked about it. I think we. <laughs> Kind of we, spoiled it there yeah. a little bit, actually. We we agree. It's it's already <laughs> out. So this identity is out and in play, playable today. It's your local. It game might team. be the next one we do. Oh oh, I I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> I get it now. Throwing the buzzword out. But um, <laughs> Grindle is not something to laugh at. It's amazingly strong. Super serious. <laughs> so sincere. Yeah. Are we still doing that? What. <laughs> Like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> any any final shout outs? Uh, no, Agenda 7. Thanks for naming me second most handsome. <laughs> yeah, we, again, we just wanted to give our boys down, uh, down uh, at Agenda 7 <laughs> a little bit of a shout out. <laughs> Make sure you like and, and we want to know. And subscribe. You, you told us that Steph's hot. Obviously, <laughs> Steph's hot. And he's the second hottest. So me right i'm <laughs> number three because i thought i was number one and then you blew my mind yeah we need to know who's taking home the bronze and who's coming in worst place <laughs> oh very very uh soshi themed right now <laughs> anyway. yeah i'm all about olympics didn't we say that we weren't going to do this unless it was a vanity project <laughs> subscribe help us out guys